I don't remember in how many meetings I've been where people bring up camber and everybody has different settings. Uh, some swear you should use positive camber, others are swearing you should negative camber. And then there's a the quantity of camber. Some people claim even 10 degrees, 2 degrees, 1 degrees, minus 10, minus 2. You know, and the debate goes on and on. But to be very honest, everybody is probably right in his own way because it all depends for what purpose you're going to use the car. If you go in to do drag racing, then camber is a complete different requirement than if you go in to do oval racing. And if you go in on a track, it's different from oval racing. And if you're going to do off-roading, it's different again. So depending on your application, camber is to be set in a different way. And hopefully in this video I can explain you that. So the question is, what is camber? Why do you need it? What does it do? What types do we have? What kind of tools do you need to adjust it? And then finally, we go into adjust it uh, on this race car. If you're going to set the camber on your car, you're going to need some tools. The cheapest tool on the market is nothing more than a ball plate. So you attach a ball plate here, you let the string go down through the center of the wheel, top to bottom, and then you measure the distance between the top of the rim and the string, and you do the same thing on the bottom. If the distance is equal, you have zero degrees. If there is a delta between the two distances, then you need to calculate what the angle is. But if you want to work a bit faster and more efficient, then you might want to go for a, cast, a camber gauge. And here is my camber gauge, and it's magnetic, as you can see. Very handy. You just stick it to the wheel hub, and you can read right away the camber. In the middle, I have a professional camber gauge with negative and positive camber. And you probably heard me say caster. Well, that's because this tool right here can also set the caster. And this is something we'll do in our, one of our next videos. And if you have none of that, you could use a builder's laser. And this is one that is having a vertical beam. So if you have that vertical beam, then you can shine it along the side of the rim. And then, in essence, uh, you can measure the distance between the beam and the top of the rim, just like you did with the, with the string. Very handy. So in this video, I will be using the builder's laser because I think most people have something like this. And I will confirm the reading or prove the reading with the professional gauge uh, for caster and camber. But there's one thing we forgot. And this is the part we were missing, slip panels. Just two pieces of material that are sliding over each other. So when the suspension sits on it, it will shift this out the way it needs to shift out. If the tires are sitting on the floor, that is a bit rough and the suspension will not settle properly. So setting the camber is something you need to do with slip panels. Uh, you can use stainless steel panels, uh, you can use hard PVC, whatever you have. And I'm using here kind of a hard PVC. Works great and you'll see it. So now the question is, what is camber? Well, camber is the inclination of the wheel on the vertical plane. So either the tire is pointing inwards to the center of the car. This is what we call negative camber. And if the tire is pointing outwards of the center of the car, this is what we call positive camber. And as you can see, this tire right now is having a little bit of positive camber because it's leaning outside. In the back, the tires have for the moment a little bit of negative camber, but nothing is adjusted so far. And this is the rear tire. And as you can see, this is negative camber. It's leaning inwards to the center of the car. Camber has an effect on braking. Camber has an effect on acceleration. Camber has an effect on cornering. And that is why it is so important. And camber can be applied differently in the back of the car and in the front of the car. And of course, it depends for what purpose you're going to use the car. On a track, it's a different setting than on a drag race. And I'm going to try to explain that very shortly. And then we look on a simulation on a computer program so you can actually see what happens. It is important in racing that the tires are keeping as much as contact with the road as possible to have the maximum amount of grip. Now, if you're cornering, your suspension is being compressed because all the weight from the inner circle is moved to the outer circle. And also your tires are going to deform. And that together is causing that the patch area of your tire is getting less. So you have less grip. We can compensate for that. And therefore, we would be setting 
normally some negative camber. So whenever we go through a curve or we corner, we can actually have the maximum amount of contact on the road from the tires on the outside that are so loaded. So negative camber is good for cornering. However, negative camber creates less stability in a straight line. So if you're driving on a straight line, you want to accelerate. But now the tires will having some negative camber. So the surface of the tires on the tarmac is going to be less. So now this is a balance you have to choose. So if the surface is less on a straight line, then you're going to have less grip. So your braking distance will increase and you may have some slipping on acceleration just because that contact, contact patch is getting smaller. Now positive camber is just the opposite. Now the wheels are actually pointing outwards like this. Now that is good for straight line driving, for stability. That is something what you see on tractors and you see it sometimes on old racing cars that had a lot of dive when they were braking. But overall you would find maybe a little bit of positive camber on the front wheels because that makes it easier for stability. But then again, the cornering isn't that good. And in the back of the cars, most of the time, you will find negative camber. I'm going for negative camber on the back and on the front of the car because cornering for me is more important. I'm not driving on a dragster strip. That's not what I do. I have a lot of corners on the circuit, on the track. So I want that my cornering is perfect because that's where I'm going to gain speed. That's where I'm going to gain Maybe the race, who knows. So now let's have a look on what that is on the simulation. On the screen, we have the simulation of a race car and the blue lines are actually the shell or the body. We've got the wrist bones. You've got all the dimensions that you can set up. We've got the tires left and right. And underneath the tires, you actually find the contact zone between the tire and the tarmac on both sides. So right now we have about zero degrees camber. Now let's see what happens if we roll the car. So if we now take a right turn, all the weight will move to the left and see what happens underneath the left tire. The blue line gets smaller, we're losing grip. That's what basically happens. So now let's do the same thing again, but now we're going to set the camber to let's say minus 2.5 degrees, something like that. I mean, minus 2.6 is good enough. So now let's go back and see what happens if we roll the tire and pay attention to this line here and that line. Now, right now we are not turning. So you can see on a straight line, we are losing grip a bit, but that's okay uh, because we go into the race on the racetrack. So I mainly need to take fast corners, so I don't really mind too much. I want to have all the grip in the corners. So that now me corner to the right and then see what happens. If I corner to the right, the weight shifts to the left. And you can see that my patch now underneath my left tire is still fairly big, even though I have already a considerable amount of roll. So now I have all the grip on the left tire that I need because that's the one with all the load on. That's the one that keeps me in the corner or in the curve. Of course, if I go further, then you see you're going to start losing it. But now again, I'm already at a high, high angle on this car. So a lot depends on the total geometry on the car, but you can see that setting negative camber improves the grip. Now let's go back and um, do something else. And we're going to set uh, the camber to plus two five degrees of camber, which is just the opposite. Now this is working fine for steering, but not all that good for cornering. So let's see what happens. Now, what's the blue line underneath this tire? Again, I'm going to take a right turn and see what happens. Oh, look at that. Look what happens. I'm losing so much grip on the outer tire. The blue line is getting really short. So positive camber, certainly no good for cornering but then again if i was on a drag strip i might want to set it to maybe something like minus two degrees and now look what happens i've got a perfect uh, surface touch underneath and uh, of course i don't need to turn or, or or corner because i'm on a straight line 
Now let us verify and adjust the camber and the first thing I need to do is to fit the slip plates. Okay. Now you want to settle the suspension as much as you can by shaking the car. Boat wheels on the slip plate and here's our fancy caster meter and let's stick it in and see what we got. And what I see is that we have roughly about two and a quarter degrees of negative camber. This is a digital level that you typically use in building construction and I see 87.6 so that is 2.4 degrees. Of course that is on the assumption that the rims are correct and that it might not always be the case. So now we'll do the laser test and I'm going to place the laser at some distance and turning it on and making sure it's level and now all I need to do is measure the distance so I might be a bit too far off I'm going to move it a little bit closer there we go good so now I'm going to measure so I'm going to measure on a straight line down to the bottom of the rim and I have roughly 128 millimeters and I'll do the same on the top and here I see it a bit better and that's 142 so let's remember those two figures and then we calculate it so this is an online tool to calculate the uh, angle that we have on the camber based on the laser measurements. But you can do this, of course, on your own with a calculator, but it's easy to show it like this. So we know that the laser is 90 degrees vertical on the horizontal plane, so we type in 90. We also know that the top was 142 millimeters and the bottom 127 millimeters. So the difference between the two is actually 15. So I'm going to put in 15 millimeters on the, a, the B side. And then for the C side, well, that's the distance of my rim, which is 320 uh, millimeters. And now all I need to do is calculate and it should find the amount of degrees. So I did that and look at that. Look at the result here. My angle right here is 2.684 degrees. That's the angle we have. Now, there's always a bit of offset or a certain tolerance we have because we didn't measure 100% accurately because it went fairly quick. But you can see that you get very close with this kind of a tool. I have two adjustments on this car, one on the top and one on the bottom. On the top one, if I extend it, I have less negative camber or more positive. If I bring it back towards the center of the car, then I have more negative camber. And on the bottom, it's just the opposite. So depending on how far these bolts are inside the whisk bones, you should make a decision. You want to have the bolt as far as possible in it. So I have now 2.25 degrees uh, camber. So I probably will extend the top one a little bit. And for that, I need to jack up the car and release a couple of nuts and then turn it out a little bit. I think I'm going to give it one full turn and then we'll see what happens. So let me do that. I wish this would have been easier on this car without having to take things apart, but it's not always the way you want to have it. It came out, which is good. So now I need to slacken this bolt. And then turn it. I'm going to give it one full turn. Then I'm going to put it back together and see what it gives us. Whoops. Setting the alignment on the car takes a lot of time if you want to do it right. And you need to do it right to have a good result. So let's see what this gives us. All 
right, we want to have the suspension settled. So let's check again. And now we have about 1 degree 75. Well, let me just turn it. I need to make sure it's level. So yes, so this is about 1 degree and 75. So 1.75, I think I'm happy with that one. So folks, we have come to the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And we have been setting the camera in the back of the car to about 1.75 degrees negative camber. In the front, I'm going to set it most likely to about 0.5 degrees negative, maybe 0.5 positive, but that is something I might change depending on the track because I still have to do the shakedown of this car. But you've seen on how it can be done. It's not all that hard. All what you need is a level floor and a couple of tools and a lot of patience. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.